Welcome everyone uh, to this SAP community call. My name is Minina Chao. I'm part of the SAP community team and I'm here together with Ambrish Tripathi uh, talking us through SAP AI business services and giving us an overview of use cases. So very interesting topic that we have here. Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, for some housekeeping notes here, I want to mention that there is the possibility for you to raise questions. Uh, raising questions is possible via the Q&A functionality here. Uh, you can also, of course, uh, exchange via chat with us, with other attendees. Just make sure that you click on uh, to all panelists and attendees if you wish uh, to exchange with others. So would of course be happy to hear where you're from, uh, what's your background of AI business services. And um, with that, actually, I think I can already hand over to you, Ambrish, uh, to get this call started with your use case overview. And uh, then we'll have, of course, uh, some time at the end for Q&A. If you already have questions, though, uh, just real quick, uh, they might already get answered. That is because uh, we have Amber's colleague, Jana Wirt, with us, uh, who will be supporting on the Q&A side. All right, over to you, Ambrish. Thanks, Manina. Hello, everyone. A warm welcome to everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are. And uh, we are here to discuss about the SAP BI AI business services, the use case overview. And in this, uh, the basic disclaimer, like Minina mentioned, there would be different links shared for the uh, different uh, services and everything which we will be discussing. That will be at the end of the call. And agenda-wise, we will be covering the different AI trends and the introduction to a CPI business services. So mainly, we will be talking about these six business services, as you can see on the screen, service ticket intelligence, business entity recognition, document information extraction, we call it DOCS, data attribute recommendation, DAR, invoice object recommendation, IOR, and document classification. There are different services uh, against different specific business use cases. We will cover all of them with the demos, some demos with the video one, and also the customer references. And at the end of the call, we can give reference to some of the action points as well as we will cover the Q&A. Okay. And learning objective wise, we will get an overview of different SAP AI business services, the use cases from the business use a sense like different LOBs, how we can use them, et cetera, and how these services can help for the automation and optimization of organizations day-to-day -day activities. And also we can bundle some of these services together, which you can add for the optimization of business values. Okay, proceeding. So um, we are already in the AI era and there are some standard report from Gartner and McKinsey, which already established the fact that in the field of supply chain, 50% companies are already targeting to use these new age technologies like AI advanced analytics in by 2023. And in the case of procurement from where I come from, we have the chances of semi-automating or fully automating like more than 60% of the tasks. And similarly, finance is one of the area where we have lots and lots of manual integration like collecting of data and processing it further. So there also with the help of these services, almost 50% of automation can be achieved. Um, this is a high level architecture overview of SAP, we can say like there would be network and different applications and we fall in the business technology platform where we will have database data management analytics application development and integration are these services mainly fall under intelligent technologies, these six AI business services which we talked and uh, if we uh, go specifically to like a club of these six. These three, as you see in the screen, uh, business entity recognition, document information extraction, document classification. These three we club as business document processing because here we mainly target like different business document we uh, receive on day-to-day -day basis on different use cases. How out of those documents we can trace some data, we can structure it further and also do some enrichment and do some value creation tasks. 
So these three are focusing on business documents and the other three data attribute recommendation, invoice recommendation, invoice object recommendation and STI service ticket intelligence. That helps in some of the other day-to-day -day activities, which we'll, we will cover over the journey of other slides. So these services, they basically provide the strategic ML capabilities, which help for the automation, optimization of business process, reduction of uh, many of the man hours, and also reducing many error prone activities. Yeah, so uh, the key advantage out of that, as you see, we will get fast time to business value, obviously, because many things are being automated. The best practice will be integrated into our business processes. And also there is flexibility to serve different needs and standard as per the LOBs, as per the different use cases we will cover. Now, so the way we have structured this, we will discuss about the uh, problem statement or the use case, and then how our services are helpful here. So in this slide, we are talking about a service ticket use case where for any, any company, any service, there would be like day-to-day -day business tickets being raised with respect to different area. Now there could be different ways like uh, it is created on a web form or the end users are just sending an email to respective support team there. But for a support ticket agent, it, it's a really uphill task. Like he has to go through every ticker, every email and get information out of it. And then he has to process that further. Okay, this goes to this specific category. That's where our service, service ticket intelligence, it kicks in. It automatically uh, takes the data out of that email or the web form. It categorizes it based on the training we provide to the model. And uh, Based on that, it also provides the recommended solution and also like uh, in the past, a similar ticket might have been created in the same line. So those kind of uh, uh, predicted value solution along with the category is already provided by this service. So that's where like the business benefit and value out of it, we are saving the time of the service ticket agent. He do not have to go through the email or the web form to really get a grasp of what kind of ticket it is. And uh, with the help of uh, um, proposed solutions, we will reduce the response time, which will in increase the end user experience. And also we will save a lot of cost with the efficient customer service operations. This is about the service ticket intelligence. Now, <clears throat> in the next slide, what we have done, as I discussed earlier, we can also club few of our services. So in this slide, we have gone one step further. The use case is similar, like we are getting some sort of a support ticket, but from the earlier service, we were just getting a grasp of what kind of ticket it is. Maybe it's a finance related ticket or a supply chain related ticket. But now we are introducing one more service in the game, which is business entity recognition. So what it will do, it will grab the right business object out of that email. It could be like a purchase order, like a invoice, like a payment related object. It will grab that object. It will automatically trace it from the whatever backend ERP you are using, be it SAP or other ERP. And it will uh, take that information from the system. It will automatically get, get the latest uh, status out of that. And it will fetch it back to the uh, ticket automatically. So neither the service ticket uh, engineer, he has to do a lot of digging into the ERP system you are using or now the end user, it will take a lot of time because service is automatically doing that. So here again, we are uh, minimizing a lot of repetitive tasks, manual tasks. We are adding the value creation tasks. So for the service ticket person, he can uh, put his time to the more value addition tasks. And also we can uh, club it with the SAP robotics process intelligence where the RPA bot can also like directly fetch the data and send the respective email to end users. We will get a more understanding of it through a video. Let me go to the video. So here you see there is a, a ticket which has come and this ticket is talking specifically about to complain of the status of what is the status of my respective invoice. So now this has gone to the respective support portal. There there this service will kick in. First, the service ticket intelligence will kick in. So now, as you see in the video, based on the text which was there in the email, 
it has already recognized that it comes to the account payable category as the first one and maybe as a sub level it is asking about ap invoice status now it will go further uh, from the ticketing tool wise um, there could be other elements like which team and all that can also be triggered and fetched through and now here um, i think in this video we will probably put the company code manually but obviously we can automate it using rpa also so once we put the company code and it goes further to see what kind of attachment was there so from the attachment it will fetch that business object that's where the second service business entity recognition will kick in and it has read that value from this email okay this looks like a invoice number and it will trace that invoice number back in the erp used by the customer now once you execute the same see the service has completed its job and you can already see that there is an answer provided by this service because it has gone to the erp it has find the status of that invoice so it was not that service agent was going to erp already service has done that and using the automation it has already sent the status of the invoices to the end user so here both of the service help the overall process where for end user it was a real quick as soon as the mail arrived it it went to the uh, service ticket intelligence and from there the category was optimized the respective data was traced from the erp and he got the status back in few minutes um let's proceed to the next category so the third one document information extraction so now um, i will start with a very basic example like in every company we have like daily lot of master data being created be it the supply chain be it manufacturing or finance and when we create these master data there are lots and lots of uh, different data columns values which we have to fill and many times uh, that data uh, sorry this is about the uh, i was telling about the other one the uh, data attribute recommendation but coming back to document information extraction we call it docs so here we will talk about a use case like uh, uh, invoice we are supporting invoice and payment advice here but in the case of invoice generally lots of suppliers are submitting the pdf invoices and for any ap clerk to uh, process further that invoice uh, it takes a lot of time to really read the different uh, column values of that invoice put it into the respective invoice processing tool and process it further so this is really an unstructured data but what doc service does here document information extraction it extract the data out of that pdf it put it in a structure format in a tabular format with the respective tool and it also enrich because in the invoice there are many fields like uh, employee name or customer or the vendor it can also enrich if there is some missing information because we have trained the model to really uh, fetch those information which might be missing so it will fetch all those values and then for any epic clerk it takes a lot of it saves a lot of time to just uh, see okay all the fields have been already filled in the tool now i can automatically post the invoices and obviously we can also go for invoice reconciliation a whole process um yeah there is a, a demo video on this which is embedded in our conquer tool this is already live with sap conquer and here the ap clerk they are just going to the invoice capture screen they are uploading a invoice document here so for this we will just take a sample invoice document let's take a easy invoice from the past when we load it to the system in the conquer we can do this different uh, drop down how against with this business use case we are uploading it and then once the invoice has been uploaded we can validate it that uh, what kind of field values have it picked from the pdf scan so the doc service uh, it contains the ocr as well as along with the enrichment of the values ocr just reads the value based on the binding boxes but the enrichment can also help with the dif uh, respective difference from the erp system so here it has as you see here based on the invoice number here it has already put it in the invoice number screen similarly invoice date currency tax code etc everything can be directly traced back from the pdf no manual intervention here 
and if there are multiple line items obvious obviously multiple lines or item invoice will also be given um let's Ambush? yeah um there was just a little uh request if you could um talk a little bit more slowly because probably it's okay. a lot of great information that you share <laughs> sure sure thank you okay let's talk about the data attribute recommendation so now in this example, as I was talking earlier, so in the daily day-to-day -day business LOBs, business functions, we have a lot of requests for the master data creation on day-to-day -day basis. We might be getting this master data probably in a web-based format or in a CSV or in Excel or any other format. But when we start filling that data in the ERP system, uh, we have to follow the formats of respective table, respective functions like procurement, business partner, supply chain. And there we need a lot of column and those values. So if there is not everything has been provided in the CSV or Excel, we can train our system using this service based on the master data feeds and everything that, uh, okay, business partner level, this thing seems to be missed. We can predict these values based on the past record. And based on that, the uh, master data maintenance team member, they can see, okay, for them, it's uh, really saving a lot of time. They do not have to manually probably trace different document coming from the uh, different service, different request. And they can just uh, review it and uh, submit it further for the master data maintenance. We have it live with one of our Russian customers, Sevastrel, where we have already seen like 20% reduction of efforts, man hours. And also, uh, obviously, because the system is reading all the values, it is predicting based on that, it is uh, saving a lot of error prone activities also. Um, yeah, we have a video also, video demo on this. So, in this, for example, we have trained the system based on a certain description for the material master record and based on the description manufacturer name price if there was a master data agent he might have to really find in the system okay this looks like a use case where i have to really find a specific category which will be falling under it but here system is already uh, learning it based on the training provided that in this case this description compatible with select electronic devices, et cetera. System has already figured out that this looks more like a connected home and housewares, but this is only a parent level. It can also go to child level, like under this, it can be housewares, under this further, it can be household batteries. In this case, since it was a hierarchical data, so system has recognized that and it has predicted those three levels. But if we had a, just a straightforward category, system would have given that also. Um, yeah, this is about this and uh, the DAR is really useful because uh, as you can see in this slide, it can be plugged with different solutions like CAI, conversational AI, which is chatbot, robotics process automation, C4 or S4 area. And it almost touches all of the different business processes like uh, be it procurement, be it master data management, be it R&D because master data is the like very basic of all these different LOBs. We have to have filled, uh, have it filled for different use cases. And that's where this service helps a lot in the prediction of the pending values and filling it based on the learning provided to the system. Okay. Um, the next is the invoice object recommendation. So here actually uh, we have again clubbed two of our services invoice object recommendation, document information extraction. So earlier in the document information extraction, we talked about a st standard invoice where we have to grab the values from the invoice PDF. We have to fill it in the system. If it is a manual activity, the AP clerk has to understand those values, fill it again, respective columns, which already docs has solved. But generally in the case of invoice, um, if there's a purchase order, it is pretty much straightforward because generally invoice is just the flip of the purchase order. But what if there is no purchase order reference? In that case, 
this other service comes handy invoice object recommendation so here we can train the system on the past data probably it takes like 6 to 12 months of past data to train the system so how to post those uh, uh, invoices without uh, any reference document like a purchase order uh, these are generally the service invoices we have to post them against the general ledger or the cost object so in this case as you see we have also introduced a rpa bot here as soon as the file is uh, loaded in the system bot grabs it and then the document information extraction it reads the values from the file it put it in a structured format now bot checks whether there is a purchase order reference against it if it is there then it is uh, very easy for the invoice to be flipped again that po if there is no purchase order against it that's where this service will come handy invoice object recommendation it will give the predicted values of uh, uh, the to be object again which the invoice can be posted so here um, once the ior service is introduced the bot uh, we it gives us the specific uh, confidence score against like it might be this general ledger or this cost center and for an ap clerk he does not have to like manually search for a specific general ledger probably by the number no one will remember all the numbers by heart or if there is a description still there is confusion because there could be multiple general ledger or cost object with similar description so that's where this service it can be trained and uh, it will recommend the values okay this looks like 90 percent case to finance xyz general ledger so in that case in for an ap clerk he just had to choose that recommendation and the job is done he just had to submit further for the invoice processing yeah. so here as we see that uh, uh, the benefit business benefit values out of it we get the right assignment choices for those invoice without reference it uh, enhances the financial reporting it increases the accuracy of this reporting and we are clubbing two of services which is also adding values for all sort of invoices we are covering now be it with a reference or without a reference um, and now it brings us to the last service document classification so now uh, earlier we were talking about different documents like uh, for invoice or the payment advice or any other document. But what happens if the vendors, they are just sending the documents without any specification, like this sales order, this is a purchase order, like that. So in that case, it really becomes a challenge that what kind of document it is and where should I post it further for processing. That's where this service kicks in document classification it reads those values based on the system training we provided it can classify that large volume of document on its own that this looks more like a invoice this looks more like a sales order or the payment advice this service can automatically read those values learn from the system and directly give that definition that this should go with the invoice processing team this should go for the sales order for the processing so it reduces a lot of manual work and uh, the to speeds up the business processes. We can improve the quantity because there's a large amount of data which is in the documents. It really a lot of manual activities are needed to really get through all those documents. So this service can be very handy here and uh, we can easily <clears throat> customize it based on the different use case we have uh, for the different business document and also improve the quality of data out of it. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. And if you want to try out any of these services, we have a trial account for the SAP Business Technology Platform. You can directly go to this link when we will share it post the call. And uh, also there are different tutorials against different services. So these tutorials have more or less all of the details uh, along with the use case as well as the technical references. Most of the things are already there. It will be very straightforward from there. And if you want any more further information, you can go to this link for different services information. And obviously, if you are going for the SAP Cloud with the full pricing information, that can also be found out here. And for future, if you want to 
uh, be updated with the latest technology trends on the SAP AI business services. You can follow our community profile and you can be up to date on this topic page. And for the respective services also, you can follow depending on your need, depending on the LOB you are coming from, depending on the use case. Yeah. And now here, yeah, we can open up for question and answers. Yeah. All right, thank you, Ambrish, for your overview of use cases. Uh, we had several questions coming in already um, that have been answered in chat. If you would like, have a quick scan through the questions that we okay. have. And where uh, can I find, yeah, can I find the list of use cases for BI? Is there a repository? Okay. I think Jenna has already answered it. Would you like to answer this question? Okay. Yeah. So yeah as, I, to... as I um as also Menina already um wrote um in the quest uh, in the answer for the question, you can go to our um community topic page where we write um regular blogs about um, our uh, use cases. Um, so um, you can find there a lot of blocks um, where we describe the use cases. And then I think I also answered two questions that we received in chat, um, also in chat. Uh, one is um, where uh, if the SAP AI business services are um, ready um, and available for customers um, and um, the answer is yes, definitely. You can use them, they're available for customers. And um, so you can buy them, try them also out in our um, in, in the free trial. You can try them out there as well in the business technology platform free trial. And um, they uh, most of the services can be trained with customer data to adapt them to the use case. And um, the information about that you can also find on, on the uh, community topic page. And also, um, I can also add um, in the chat another link to our help documentation, where you then also find technical details on. And there you will also find details on how much you can adapt or enhance the services. Thanks, Ina. Um, there is one question, the AI bot has some limitations on the volume of data in what use cases can we use bot and what the data volume recommendation for such use cases. So yeah, as per different services, there are different requirements for some we have to have minimum three to 5000 records of data. So these all details, you will also get it on the respective link, which we shared earlier in the last and second last slide. Yeah. And where you can use port, yeah, that is also actually up to use case we are talking about here. But in general sense, because we are exposing this, exposing these services via APIs, so it will be very much flexible to really club it to the bot and just call out the API. Yeah. Then um, I see one question to the license costs. Maybe I can take that over um, or which licenses are required. So our services, the six services you have seen in the beginning are all part of um, the cloud platform enterprise agreement. Um, they are also available all through the SAP store. Um, and they are also now available um, with the pay as you go um, license model in cloud platform enterprise agreement and in, um, in pay as you go, you pay, um, as, as the name says, as you go, you pay what you use. Um, and so they're basically a, a consumption-based uh, model. In um, SAP Store, you can buy them as a subscription license where you have to um, estimate how uh, much you will need of the services in the time of your contract time. 
And also, um, if there are some um, partners uh, in the call here, um, the services are also part of our partner price list. So either if you are working with a partner a lot, um, an SAP partner a lot, or you um, are a partner, I think this is also valuable information. I see more questions in the chat. So um, there's one about the skill sets required for a customer to deploy SAP AI business services. Yeah, so I think actually this is the beauty of the SAP AI business services. They um, are made so that you don't need a data scientist. And this is good because a lot of smaller customers, they don't have the um, capacity and also not the like manpower of uh, hundreds of data scientists. And that's the idea of the, um, of the services. They basically um, provide pre-packaged smaller um, machine learning capabilities that can solve um, one business problem that can be part of many different business processes. And actually the, the main skill set that you need is um, your backend or UI developers. Um, because you want to integrate those services into your own use cases, right? And therefore, you need someone um, who has knowledge about the system you want to integrate them in. And by the way, here, I also can mention that the services can not only be integrated into SAP systems, but they can also be integrated in any other system because the services um, consist mainly of APIs and um, they're handled via API calls, which you can do um, from any system that you are using. And um, why did I mention UI? Because I think that it is very important that um, those um, those services are then also properly integrated into your eyes so that it is a seamless experience for your um, users and for your, um, yeah, your end users. So basically, if you automate um, the classification of service tickets, um, the service ticket classification should be populated automatically in the UI of a service agent, right? Just uh, to mention one example. And um, that is why I also mentioned a UI developer here. Uh, I see one more in the, um, in the Q&A tool. Can AI business services integrate with other BTP services and applications such as cloud integration and data intelligence? Definitely, they can. And we also have a blog post, for example, published um, already on integrating the document information extraction service into email inboxes with, um, with cloud integration. So um, this is definitely something that you can do. We also had one customer that was trying out to integrate um, it even with uh, business rules and workflows um, to um, automate yeah, a longer process chain as well. So um, yes, definitely something that you can do. Um. So I see one question, what are the out of the box services in SAP AI business services? I'm not sure if uh, what exactly um, is meant with that because the SAP AI business services portfolio consists of the six services that Ampris has shown before. And um, there are some out of the box um, use cases. Um, so of course we as SAP are working on integrating those services as well into our own solutions, for example, into um, S4HANA. So there is, um, for example, um, just recently released um, an S4HANA cloud integration of our document information extraction service, um, which um, automates um, the creation of sales orders from, purchase, from received purchase orders. So basically, if you receive an pur a purchase order as a PDF, the document information extraction service um, extracts the information automatically and creates the sales order. And um, this is, um, is, for example, one of the use cases where we integrated it and natively and all S4HANA cloud customers can use this. Um, however, there might be other use cases where we don't have an integration yet. 
Um, so I'm not sure if you wanted to know about those standard integrations um, or, or about the six services one more time. Maybe you can also let us know in chat. So there is another use case, yeah. another question, sorry. Um, for service ticket use case, a similar use case is also possible with integration autopilot 3D party application with cloud for customer solution. What advantages does this use case, ha use case have on this? So I actually don't know the autopilot third party application. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, I don't know all of our um, competitor and third party products. However, I can tell you that um, the Cloud for Customer Enterprise Edition actually also has a native integration of our service ticket intelligence solution. And all um, Cloud for Customer Enterprise Edition customers are entitled to use this uh, functionality of service ticket intelligence without extra charge and without an extra, having an extra license. So it is basically part of the Cloud for Customer Enterprise Edition license. So if you have further questions, it's also possible to raise your hand and, um, and speak out loud if you like, and we can of course also unmute you. Otherwise, I see uh, another I question see coming in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does SAP itself use the same AI services that it is trying to sell to customers and how successful is it? Yes, we definitely do. I mean, as you see, we have the standard integrations, for example, with the Conquer um, solution that um, also Ambrish was showing in his demo. We already have um, thousands of customers. Um, first proof point that it is successful, but second proof point is, you can also find um, via our um, community page, um, a customer reference story of SAP runs SAP basically. And there our um, partner management organization uses the service ticket intelligence service, for example, to also um, uh, automate or yeah, speed up the processing of partner tickets that we receive from our business partners um, that uh, help um, our customers with implementations, for example. Perfect, thank you for responding. Uh, both Jana and Ambrish are also um, available in SAP community. I'm posting their profiles in, in chat in a moment, but definitely recommend uh, looking up the community topic page um, with all the information that has just been shared and of course for much more. Um, for further questions though, if you feel like uh, you wanna know more, there is also a Q and A area in SAP community that can be found over the SAP community topic page for SAP AI business services. Definitely recommend uh, having a look there. Maybe there's a question that you already had that has been answered or feel free to raise your question there as well. Um, if there are no more questions coming in now, well, let's wait a couple of more moments. Meanwhile, I can post the information in chat. Here's the Q&A. I will stop the recording for now. Thank you for joining. And I hope you uh, enjoyed this call, found it helpful, and um, we'll see you in one of the other calls again. Huh. So there was just one question coming in right now. <laughs> okay. um, so I will interrupt then let's you. Let's that in the your recording. <laughs> and um, I will answer it also. We don't have it in the recording then. Um, how can no, we have? Oh, okay, good. Um, how can customers co-innovate for some of the business cases with AI services? So if you have um, a use case um, that can be covered with the existing services, but um, for example, um, it's not accurate enough or you don't get the results that you think you should get, very important um, for us is that there is data available and that you are willing to share the data. I um, have to say that before uh, I continue any further. 
and um, for uh, for if you have data, you're willing to share the data in general. Of course, there needs some legal. There needs to be some legal paperwork as well um, done before the data sharing. And then, of course, you can um, also reach out to us um, on our community profiles, as um, Minina already said, and uh, we can look into that further. Also, um, uh, I can recommend you the customer influence tool where you can also raise um, requests or ideas that you um, have for um, certain topics. And you can also, of course, raise um, ideas and requests there. Perfect. Thank you, Jana.